right, it's 2010, November. I'm just taking us back to August 2010 when I went on a family tree trip to all sorts of places. Suffolk, Kent, Sussex, Cambridgeshire. But in this particular tape recording, I'm at um, Creating St. Mary or St. Mary Creating in Suffolk where my times five great-grandparents got married at this particular church. The Brooks, Richard Brooks and Martha Miles who were from this area. In fact, I discovered following this visit that the Brookses were a quite an aristocratic family, high up in royal circles and everything. Um, but I think they did lose some of their wealth um, the, in the Aspinall area. I think they actually sold it to a cider making people. Who are still, I think they might still be there today. Um, yeah, I think they might have been involved in the gum powder plot. Um, some even beheaded and locked in the tower, I believe. But I'm researching all that. But I do know that they are tied up with a lot of our other aristocratic families in this area. Like the Peverells, the Peshes, uh, the De Clares, all sorts of people that we've got scattered around. The Coldybecks and the Underhills as well. The Cloptons. But anyway, this is me then. This um, Arriving at Crete and St. Mary to look around the church and explore. There used to be two churches here. Uh, one was called um, St. Olaf, which fell, fell down in the 1800s due to a storm. And the fact that it wasn't didn't have any foundations, it was literally built on the ground. So it was deteriorating anyway. Um, so there wasn't much evidence of that, apart from a few plaques lying about. Um, so there we go. This is um, Sheila then in... August 2010. Apologies for any disturbances in sound. I'm having a lot of technical problems since I've joined. BT Broadband and its new hub with its voice and speaking um, technical things that it's put on my computer. It seems to be interfering with my recordings for some reason. Yes, um, 
you go down there and you'll see the church on the right. Oh, right, what's it about then? There, there is a lay-by on the left, you can see. Oh, good. Just after the school. Oh, right. It's right. the village school. Yeah. So there's a lay-by. Oh, right, thank you. Park there and the church is on yeah, the Yeah, because one of my great, 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 great grandmothers was uh, born here. Oh, Back right. in 1720. Oh, right. They were called Miles. Miles. Miles, the family of Miles and the Brooks. Richard right. Brooks is another one. We don't know because we're not originals. No, no, I do is that M-Y-L-E-S or M-I? It could be either way because they change state names for spelling sometimes. So old English to new. Yeah. Well, anyway, let's go find the church. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, yeah, there's a lay-by. 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 Six-year-old people, they can read like just one shot. Who's the old pink cottage? The old post office. Well, I'll have to get a picture of that. But I'll have to have a run there. Yeah, I do get a picture of that. It's the pink thatched cottage of the old post office. There's also Creeting Hall, which I take a picture of. You can't really see it. There's a lot of trees in the way. I mean, I don't know how old some of these are, but if they're two or three hundred years old, they're probably about the same thing. Church clubs. Well, not to worry, they tried their best, but what I'm doing is standing in the village by car press. Ah, uh, there it is. There's the church. I can drive up there. I don't see one there. Let's see if I can drive up there, isn't it? Beck, second son of the late Edward Bigsby Beck, this parish. 
bed in the family vault on the south side of the church. We've got some nice stained glass windows as well. Apparently very, very good quality glass, the lady was telling me. So we're going back further in time again with this, with this church. I'm up in the altar now. A nice organ there. John William Turner. The hymn board was erected by his family in loving memory of John William Turner, who died in 1962 for many years, church warden. There's the piscina there. I'll just take a few photos. Um, but if you can get up. I'm just going up into the hall for a minute. Beautiful Suffolk countryside. 
There was another church, St. Olaf, which I'm going to go to afterwards. Um, and there used to be another church, almost on this site in the past as well, that would be seen by the, from the main road. Um, so this is St. Mary Cretan. It's taken some more pictures as well, from this angle. The front of the church. There's um, a newer graveyard, apparently, as well. Right, this tape, I've got to watch this tape recorder, it keeps turning itself off. I recorded something, I thought I recorded something a minute ago about the front of the church. There's a, there's a, I've taken a picture of it, a school, an old schoolhouse, which is now like a church hall, used for meetings and that. That was built in 1843 or 6, that housed both boys and girls and also had a little tiny play area. I took pictures of that and then I, I'd done a scan of various names and of course none of that's recorded. Uh, I've got to remember to keep my finger on the button on this one. Otherwise I'm going to be talking for 20 minutes and nothing's going to be on there. So everything I did which took 10 minutes isn't on here. So I'm starting again. I've uh, got a Charles Chaplin who died 27th of December 1912, age 34. Also his son who died as a prisoner, a Japanese prisoner of war, in 1943, age 26. I took a picture of this grave because it's got a weird dead plant growing on it. it looks very spooky. We've got Quintins and Harveys. Like I said, I've done all this a minute ago. <laughs> I didn't record it all. I don't feel like going back in it or no. Like I said, I will be starting to use my digital recorder at some point because um, I've got a lot of background noise here. My, my actual computer itself is humming away like crazy. So I've got all sorts of things going on, technical problems with my computer, and it's doing all sorts of weird things with anything I record. Not exactly if I play music or anything like that. It's really strange. I've never had this problem before. We've got Quintons, that's right, mugs. Um, Studleys, Rakes, Mayhews, Keeble, Beck, there's a little square called Beck, um, there's a whole row, which none of this has come out, it's so annoying, I've got to go back, a whole row of clovers, that's right, over there, uh, rivers, because I came across the rivers yesterday when I went to um, Melford Hall, where um, one of the a Countess Rivers, who married um, a, a, a man from there, Cordell was the that man. That was in um, Melford House, which I visited as well during this trip. And uh, they were in a bit of competition with the Cloptons of um, Kentwell House, actually. They, they did marry into each other's families on occasions, I believe. Um, but I've got a book that I got out as well when I went to Kentwell, Forgotten Families of Sussex and Essex by Evelyn Wright. And she she has a whole number of different families um, from this area. And one of them will be my Brooks family as well, which I'm doing further research on. Anyway, back to the cassette. Um, she ended up in poverty. Um, so we've got, so we got, um, yeah, we've got Becks here. Edward Bixie Beck, Henry Beck, Needham Market. They've got quite a big tombstone around the back of the church. Um, I'm, go I'm going to the other side of the church now where there's quite a nice, that's been done. It's quite pretty here. Um, with another porch way in. Welcome to Creating St. Mary Church. Creating Charles of Reverend Christine Everett on 01449 Um, There is a bell 
burial lists, apparently, or, or a list of the graves that you can get from the Norwich, um, not Norwich, Ipswich archives, apparently hold a record of the burials. Right, going round again, we've got um, just some more names. Morris Carn Clay. We're looking for miles, of course. I have, like I said, I've only just started on. This is the start, really, of the miles because um, I've, I've really done books. We've got a large Celtic cross to the glory of God and grateful memory of the men of this church and parish who laid down their lives in the Great War, 1914 to 1919. Their name liveth forevermore. Barker, Percy, Percy Barker, the Sixth Regiment, James Brett, John Bryan, Second Regiment, Edward Chaplin, Second Regiment, George H. Chaplin, Second Regiment, Frank Cooper, Second Regiment, Sydney Day, George Green. Also, the following who fell in the Second World War well, Jack Bondry, 2nd Regiment, Alec Hammond, John Hunt, Patrick Swain. There was, of course, that Japanese soldier that hasn't been remembered here. A Japanese soldier, and no, he was a Japanese prisoner of war, unless he's mentioned on this side. Can't see anything there. I'm just going to take some more pictures of the church. Just to say that there are Chapmans here. I'll just mention one. Susanna Chapman, born January the 4th, 1820, died December the 22nd, 1902. And Susan Moore, mother of the above. Just to say, because with those Chapmans on the Lockwood side, from Suffolk, we've got other men, the Knee Kings. I haven't come across any males yet. In fact, I've never come across a males. Got Lamberts, more Lamberts. Uh, there's a whole row of um, woolards, actually. Quite um, well preserved graves. Get a woolards here. Um, we've got William George Woolard. He died in 1885, age 20. There's lots of Willards. There's a whole row of them. But there are Willards in the family somewhere as well. These are all of Needham. Needham Market. Willards, these are. But it's always you know, handy to know because one stage or another, that family might have linked up with other lads over uh X same way. Yeah, there's even more of those um what's this one called? Could be Delilah Willard. He died in 1832, age 34. There's quite a big prominence of Willard here and there's an Elston as well. I might take a picture. Adelaide Elizabeth Elsden died in 1906, age 75. Another Elsden next to that, William Elsden. Um, that's not very clear about that one at the moment. 18 somewhere there anyway. So Elsden, that's Kent's. Brother Kent, Anna Kent, Kezia Kent, John Kent, um, James Wright, Jill and Juliet, <laughs> of the Pentaville, London, Alice, the beloved wife of George Eliot, who died at Needham Market, in 1877, aged 36 years. I wonder if that is. Then there's lots of Francis's. There's a George Francis, who's 36 in, 19, in 1885 when he died. William Francis, husband of Mary. 
He died age 68 in 1892. Mary Francis, wife of William. She died in 1907, age 70. George Francis, who died 1911, age 58. That's a Francis group. Like I said, there's probably Miles' is buried here. But a long time ago in the 17th century, the gravestones didn't really become that popular, I don't think, so look through an age. I'm not really sure when they started up. There's a few new graves. Some more quite fine looking ones. You can eat some of these, you could clean up to find out who they were. Page, Frederick Page, that's another name, this it looks like quite an old one. Here, in memory of William something Webster, dead 1815, aged But they're, very, they're up there above the surface type tombs, if you know what I mean. They're, there's a whole load of that they saw in this graveyard. They're almost like coffins made of stone above the surface. I don't think the bodies were kept like on top. I know some people said that they some were because people didn't want to be buried. So they were put inside those things. Uh, but heavy lid put on top. I don't know how true that is. <sighs> but we've had a very busy ten days. I've been all over the place from Sussex for all the that and for myself doing the medieval ancestors and the Normans. Back to Suffolk and Cambridgeshire where I've been active. I haven't spent any time in archives this time, it's all been outdoor work. I'm now going down to a newer part of the cemetery just in case there are any descendants, you see. So the new graves are important for that reason. They will show if that name survives. I haven't found any Mileses at all at the moment. I'm just having a quick look round. I'm glad I came here because this is part of my family here. And um, I'm just going to walk up the middle of this little plot here and see if I can see any mouses or brooks. Even at the minute, yeah, it's weird. I found a lot good here. Another member of a dear wife, mother and grandmother, Peggy Jean Lockwood Niehaus, who died the 14th of July, 1991, age 64. I have noticed quite a few lasts as well, because that was a link with the Isaacsons, you see, over at Wickenburg, the last family. I just put one down. Stanley Richard Last died the 26th of January, 1970, age 67. Right, well, I've been all around. I haven't found any books or any miles. Um, I have scanned. Obviously, it's a long time ago. There wouldn't be any evidence of any, you know, such people now, anyway. So, yeah, we're going to see St. Olaf next. Sometimes a good idea to actually take names of other people because you never know when they're going to join up. That's happened to me lots of times where I think, oh yeah, I've seen that in that graveyard. And um, then if I get, a, get an opportunity to go back, I can put things together, you see. Right, so we've done that one. 
There's three I've got to do yet today. Gathering. But I'm going to go and do this uh, Olaf. Right, this is a stressful period. This woman in the church, bless her, for all her good nature, she was showing me a quick way to uh, church good St. Olaf. But unfortunately, it's down a little lane, which would have been alright, but they're doing work on a bridge and they've dropped it off. So I've got a no drive at two miles an hour because of blocked a big lorry's been down there ripping branches off as it's come down. And the branches are coming up, hitting the underside of my car. I could pierce the tank or something, but do scratching. I've already had to pull one twig out now. But the thing is, I haven't got time for this. Right, I'm stopping there because I get more and more distressed and sh stressed. <gasps> um, basically, I go all the way down that lane and it comes to a dead end, which um, Simon Knott found out about as well. Um, I, I, I saw that online that he knew about that. It's also a place, this lane or roundabout here, where a, a girl was murdered not that long ago. I don't know if it was one of the Suffolk killers. There's a Suffolk Strangler who did a lot not far from round there. But um, anyway, that's a bit creepy, isn't it? I never knew that at the time. So anyway, the brook says, yeah. <laughs> I need to go back that way sometime to a place called St Earl Stoneham and Aspel, where the Brookses were really... Um, had the manor house there for quite a few hundred years and before them it belonged to the de Clares and the Peverells so we've got a long history in this area really um, we have got a great deal of medieval ancestry around here so I need to do a lot more just like I did when I was around the Burr Green, Burrwell, Exon area the new market I, I also need to go to the other side of Suffolk again and literally camp there and do a lot of work this will have to happen. I, w I was going to do it this time, but, you know, whenever I go back to Bar Green or anywhere like that, I always make new discoveries. It never ends. Cause that was on other tapes where I did the Burwell, Burwell Castle and all that with our connections with Geoffrey de Mandeville and all that sort of thing. So, you know, every, there's always new discoveries constantly. And like I like to, to stress, um, because I live in Somerset, which is too far away for me just to nip up there and do some work, you see. It is a major expedi expedition, expedition to go to Suffolk for me, um, being not well off and everything. So anyway, that's the end of the visit to Cretan St. Mary. Following this, I will be off to... Um, I go and have a look at a no number of other little churches en route. The one at Earl Stoneham was quite nice. There was a wedding being prepared there, the ladies doing the flowers. That's had quite a lot of history and was quite a nice looking church. And I, I wander all around the Suffolk countryside. I go all over the place and, um, you know, Clopton and Butley and Butley Prior and Butley Church and the Bradleys and the Beelings and, um, and Debenham. That's another one I did a lot of work on where our Catherine, Baroness Catherine Depeche came from and, um, lived as well and I don't know if she came from there but she certainly has something to do with it and so did a lot of other our other ancestors as well so we've got connections all over this place the Stutvilles that was it they were Richard Stutville and his father Thomas they were from um, Debenham before they moved on to Dalham so there's an awful lot of family history in these places and, and Debenham itself is very picturesque it was not polluted by um, the railways or anything and it's very medieval right so that's all for now folks this is Sheila in November 2010 saying see you later in another tape recording <coughs> right this is Sheila I'm just testing to see whether this is going to work or not I'm having a lot of problems with this particular tape recording all sorts of things are going on I'm just going to test it and see if it's worked a moment